I see in, in your article where Kirby Smart was asked if he felt nostalgic in Tuscaloosa, and it's, quote, less now. I mean, if you, it's just you move on. I think the last time we went, it was four or five years from the time we had lived there. It's so weird when you play there because you're in and out. You're there and then you're gone. So it's just different. But you really focus on the players, what they have to do, what we have to do to execute. It takes away from that thing. There's a lot of people that are there in the organization that I'm close with and have a lot of respect for, but that's the case in a lot of these places in the SEC, unquote. Yeah, I mean, Kirby was asked several questions about, you know, no Nick Saban, going back to Tuscaloosa, um, you know, a place that, as he pointed out in an earlier quote, look, this is where his kids were born. They lived nine years there. Um, you know, they grew up there. And so, um, yes, he is, you know, Georgia through and through. He's an alum of UGA and, and you know, has so many ties to this state, but he's got a lot of ties to Alabama too. And Tuscaloosa is certainly a special place for him. I think going back in 2020, uh, you know, first time coaching at Bryant Denny stadium on the opposite sideline and, being in that opposite different locker room, I think that was probably the first time that he felt it. But like he said, and, and that was a big one too. I mean, that was number two versus number three in the country. And, um, you know, a lot of high hopes for that season for UGA. Um, but I think also, you know, as, as he pointed out, that game was just weird because of it being a COVID season and limited crowd and, um, you know, just weird. It's going to be weird. I mean, he's going to have emotions. He's going to have thoughts um, as he goes back in, into a place that he's so familiar with. There's no avoiding that. I think that Nick Saban not being on that other sideline probably helps uh, reduce those thoughts and, and emotions a little bit um, because I, I think in the six matchups we saw between Smart and Saban, I would say sometimes he had a tendency to overthink things a little bit. And, and I think that, um, you know, the, the, the stadium is cool and all, and, and, and he's going to have some emotions there. But I think that once the, you know, once the ball is put in play, it's another football game for him. And, uh, you know, he's not having to coach against somebody and, and, and think about what they're doing, what would he do to counter that? And so, um, you know, he's not having to make an emotional decision on that front. And then we were talking earlier, and you know this, is when old, uh, Kirby and uh, Coach DeBoer and Coach Saban, I mean, all three of those in Tuscaloosa at the same time. Can you imagine? Are you going to be there? I will be. It's going to be interesting. I mean, you know, we talked to Kirby today. I, I, about I, let me, let me inter just interject this one thing. Good luck getting out of there. <laughs> Are you going to spend the night? We, we're, staying in, we're staying in Birmingham. There you nice. go. You better have an Airbnb or somewhere because it's going to be a long ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I do think it's going to be a zoo there. Um, no, I, exactly. I mean, I think that talking to Kirby today, it's it was interesting just hearing about, you know, his relationship with Saban. And, and that's obviously every time, you know, I've covered, you know, Kirby's coached six of these Georgia Alabama games. I've covered five of them, um, you know, and, and Every time that those two teams have met and, and Saban and Smart, and that has been the big storyline, and and it still is. But obviously, one of them won't be on the opposite sideline, and so I think that you know this year it's it's interesting to see how is is Georgia Alabama Smart Saban or is Georgia Alabama Georgia Alabama, and and I think it it will just be you know the G and the A and, and those two teams and those two programs. And what Saban was able to build, what DeBoer has been able to inherit and and continue to, you know, build. Um, but I also think that, you know, what Kirby has been able to build using that Saban model, it, it really creates a, a really fun, uh, you know, football game for, for fans to watch. And, um, you know, it's certainly an interesting one for all of us to talk about. Yeah. Well, I'm interested. We talked early, Jack and I earlier, we talked about um, when they do the game day picks and um, mm -hmm. saving, is he going to sit there? You know, because he keeps saying everything runs through Georgia. Everything runs through Georgia. If he, you know, what's he going to do there in Tuscaloosa? And oh, um, man. what do you think Corso is going to do? Is he going to put that little long little snout on there? Is he going <laughs> to – can you imagine the game day? 
It, it'll be I interesting. I I, de- I cannot see a world in which Nick Saban picks Georgia in front of Alabama fans. I'm gonna um, tell you. I think it's gonna be the most watched game day ever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, gonna, it, it, it's already gonna feel awkward as it is for Coach Saban because I mean, you know, because he's covering his old team, he's in his own stomping grounds. It, it's gonna like. I, I compare. He, he to, set it up. He's been everything goes through Georgia. He set it up himself. So. <laughs> like for me, like it, it's got to feel a little bit awkward, you know, like awkward, like seeing your ex girlfriend at a pool party. Like you don't <laughs> expect it, but you're just like, uh, what do I do here, Scoob? Uh, th- this is yeah. this is gonna be weird. easy way. I'll try to find that easy easy way out but they there is no easy way out on this one i cannot wait to see it i mean i cannot wait <laughs> oh, yeah. it's gonna be a great game and um it's and fun. you know the bottom line is we'll see these two teams i who knows they may play again later on in the season so who knows and especially in the 12 team playoff era i mean i think that there's a chance we see you know, these two teams play two or th- even three times. I mean, oh, look, no. it wouldn't be the first time we've seen these two teams play multiple times in a single season, and and it would not yeah. surprise me one bit if we see it multiple times this year. Well, let me let me ask you this, because um, Jack and I talked about this earlier, and you can get, give your opinion. I mean, to me, um, end of the season, okay, so we're going to have the SEC championship game on, and so then that could be Alabama-Georgia again. And then now they'll pick the whatever, and Alabama, Georgia could wind up being in the top. You know what I'm saying? And then- oh yeah. Well, and, and Georgia got a couple of those games. You know, given the fact that they play Texas in the regular season, they play Ole Miss in the regular season, they play Tennessee in the regular season. Um, you know, I think that there's a couple of those games, and it's it's well, really going to be interesting to see how it shakes out in this divisionless format because we have been so accustomed to seeing Georgia and Alabama represent the East and the West. And and you add in those two new teams and you get rid of the the two divisions, all hell breaks loose. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you this because Jack and I talked about this. Do you think the SEC championship game is on the, I mean, do you think they're going to continue? I don't know. I mean, in, the, you know, how many other conferences is going to play an extra game and then turn around and play a play, playoff? Yeah, it, it's it's interesting for sure. I mean, you know, the the entire idea of expanding the playoff. I mean, they can say what they want about this being, you know, to get more pra- fans and more programs involved. It's all about money. It's all about more, more money. money more money and, and and getting rid of a conference championship game means less money. So mm-hmm. to me, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Um, I, I do think that there's going to have to be some changes made to the model for that. You know, it, it's the college football playoff committee, I think is really, really, really going to have to reward these conference champions. Well, and, and I don't know it, it's, it's, too difficult in my opinion to play that extra game and, and take that wear and tear um i'm not saying i want to see it going because we've we've all watched incredible sec championship games my, over the years my, well let me say this if it, if it were me oh, uh, man. commissioner whatever you want to call them and unless every other conference play a championship game and had to run that risk of getting hurt Getting players hurt, injuries, and then turn around having to play a first round playoff game. I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I mean, the big money's and, in the playoffs. And, and you know the, the wear and tear that so I wouldn't run that risk. And, and you know the wear exactly. and tear that comes with playing at an SEC championship game is probably a little bit more, you know, when you're a Georgia playing an Alabama or an Alabama playing a Texas or a Texas playing an Ole Miss, you know, these these big heavy hitter programs full of heavy hitters and five stars, the the toll that that takes is a little bit more than it takes than, you know, say Clemson against Louisville or Oklahoma State against Kansas State. Or Boise yeah, State against. Different. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not equal. So, I mean, that, uh, that I mean, 
That's got to be after this season. It's going to be a hard look, and I just I do not see. There's no point in playing conference championship games if you're going to have to turn around and play a first round playoff game the next week. Yeah, yeah. So well, we know these the little shirt. brainiacs know more than us. We'll see if they figure it out. 